Today on Real Life, the courage to be healed. Dr. Mark Rutland helps us find hope to restore your soul. Plus, the sisters discuss how to put the joy in church life after it became a burden. And Tom McGuff highlights how God is moving through a Faith and Family Channel partner church. All that and more today on Real Life. Hello and welcome to Real Life, this special place and time where we come together as believers in God's presence and learn about his perfect purpose for our lives and a place where we can encourage one another. We are so glad that you are here with us in this program today. <laughs> Praise be to God. I'm Tom McGuff, I'll be your host. And joining me on the program will be Sydney Goldman. Joy to be here. And Amy hey. Schaefer. God bless you both. Yes. What, a, what a joy and thank you for spending time with us in this hour. It's gonna be a good hour. One of the reasons it's gonna be good is because we just depend so much on the Word of God and that's the power unto salvation. We have this wonderful promise from Jeremiah 29, 11, and it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Yes. Mm. And I want you to think of this as no matter what your circumstance is, God has a, a plan for you yeah. and, and it's so that you can have a future and a hope. You might be watching this program for the first time today and have no reason why you tuned in, but I gotta tell you, I know the reason. It's because God has a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. To give you hope and mm. a final outcome. Yeah. I mean, I wonder how many people are living hopeless lives without many, hope, without a joyful expectation. But that is not the life that That's God right. wants us to have. He wants us to wake up every day full and overflowing with hope and joy and peace. It actually says that the kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So I wonder where you're at today. Mm. And guess what? You're in the right place because you're watching real life and it is loaded. It is jam packed from front to beginning with hope. It mm. surely is. That is so true. And this is the Good Hope Station, the Good News Station. So we are just so glad that you're tuned in today. And you know, I just want to share with you both is that recently at my church, we always say like, ask everybody like, oh, how are you doing? Like, how would you describe your year so far? How would you describe 2019 if you had one word? And there was a 15 year old boy that said dark. That is so heartbreaking. And maybe that's how you described your year that you've went through trials and tribulations, but hold on to the hope of Jesus. Know that he is with you. Know that he can walk with you through any storm. And if you are walking through a dark time and we know the holidays can be hard for a lot of you. Give us a call on our prayer line because we have prayer partners that would love to talk to you, to encourage you because we don't want you to feel alone. We love yes. you and we're here for and you. And you know what the key paradigm in all of this and understanding this is that your circumstance doesn't change God's promise to you. Mm -hmm. Your rebellion in the past doesn't change God's promise to you that you can have a future and a hope. hope. So we are going to encourage one another in this program today. That's right. We have an incredible guest here today, Mark Rutland with his new book, Courage to Be Healed, Finding Hope to Restore Your Soul. I could not put this book down. I read it in its entirety. You are going to love it. It's going to help you. Listen to what he says. It's not God's will that I drag the burden of my past around all my days. God is a God of healing grace. He knows all the trauma. He knows all the hurt. Mm. He knows all the emotional pain. And God is so full of grace and power. He can heal our wounded emotions. It's gonna be good, rich conversation. Mm. It surely will. And, and also on this program today, we have a, a dear friend of this ministry, Ron Kozor, former uh, NFL lineman with the New England Patriots. And he is going to be talking about how we can have hope in the midst of the storm. He's yeah. had some circumstantial challenges physically yeah. this year, but God has been his King, his Lord. And so he's gonna be telling about the, the victory that he has in Jesus Christ getting through that storm. Should we give him a little bit of grace because he's from the Patriots oh, here we gotta in give him a lot Steeler of grace. Nation? I'm just saying, <laughs> well, we'll try not to burn live here on the set. Well, all I have to say is that my husband's a Tex Houston Texans fan, so we were like, woohoo! Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, coming up with this and a sister, the ladies answer a view a question about how church life can become a burden. Let's take a look. Hello and welcome. 
welcome to this segment of Sister to Sister. We are here on Real Life for you, and you send us questions, and we answer from the heart. Okay, this is good. Are you ready? Flo. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Okay, listen to this question. This is good. Dear sisters, I loved church, but I was there every chance I got. I loved everything about it, but recently it's become a burden instead of the joy it's supposed to be. What should I do? Well, you know, in working in ministry and working with different people that from ministers to laity, um, there, I've had a lot of different encounters and a lot of different experiences. And so my answer for this has, I don't know that it's changed, but my perspective um, has evolved on it a little bit. And so one of the things that, you know, we usually say stuff like, you know, people are burned out, learn how to say no. And, and that has been some of my responses uh, even in the past to questions similar like this. But I do have to also, um, bring people to the awareness that there is a grace level in your life. And when things are about to shift, when there is a change, um, that grace lifts for what it is you used to do. So let's say, for example, um, you did used to come to church uh, for a season every day. You were in Bi Bible study, not every day, but you know what I mean. Uh, every time the doors were open and you were in Bible study. But now God is raising you up to be a teacher. And so he has to allow a little holy frustration mm -hmm. to get in there That's so good. that you will mm -hmm. begin to make that mm -hmm. shift. It's, remember, it's the irritation in the oyster that causes the pearl. And so how are you going to come upon that? That's he good. has to allow you to experience some discomfort. Sometimes it is that God is moving you on to your next season. I know people that have matured in ministry and who they had as a father in the gospel for a season, who trained, who taught them, who gave them their foundation foundation could not take them to their next level. And so they had to release them. And so uh, that grace begins to lift and you start to feel kind of out of sorts and I'm just not comfortable. I'm not really angry with anybody or mad. Now those are things you want to watch for, but there's just something that mm -hmm. doesn't sit right. Yeah, and so good. sometimes mm -hmm. that grace has lifted off of you and it's a sign that it's time to move on. But whenever you do it, you want to do it in order in honor and in love. I, I actually have experienced this. Okay. I mean, there have been seasons in my life. I mean, I, I've always loved church. I, my parents brought us up and we went to church, you know, two times a week and, and it was always a priority and I, I love church. And, mm -hmm. and we've brought our family up the same way. And, and I've had seasons where it's like, why, why am I not loving this as mm -hmm. much? Mm -hmm. And at one point it was because God was preparing to move us to another state. Oh, and okay. so, yeah. we, you yeah. know, it was That's a time a where example. we were, I was getting burned out with the ministry you're involved mm -hmm. in. And I stepped back from that, mm -hmm. not from attending church, mm -hmm. right. but from That's that cool. ministry we were involved in. That's it was because, really G, you know, he was getting ready to move us out of state. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it was that very thing. And so I think it is sometimes we have to, we have to ask the Holy Spirit, what, right. you know, what, what is this that you're doing in me? What, but I just want to make that point that mm -hmm. it is never to step away from church, right. to right. step right. away away right. from the right. Lord. Right. I, don't, I don't think that's ever what he's preparing us right. for. Right. Remember, right. someone asked us this question, so mm -hmm. we're giving you our answers from our hearts. Right. What do you think, Roxy? Yeah, I agree. Don't cut off. Cut back. Yeah. Right, that's But don't good. That's cut good. off. That's really good it print. says don't forsake the assemblies of yourself. Encourage one another. Sometimes we need to be encouraged by a friend to keep the fight. As mm -hmm. Flo said, yeah, the ministry yeah. changes. I recall when my husband was asked to do a Bible study in our home. Oh boy, every week cleaning the house. <laughs> yeah, and right. That's the only way my house gets clean. Oh, and getting, a, getting a snack and ready. Snack <laughs> and breaking toys and breaking furniture. Oh, I was like, oh, so uncomfortable. I wanted to run. And God said to me one day, I'm sitting in my legal desk and he said, you know, you're a lawyer. But you're not just called to minister to your clients. You're called to minister to my people. Amen. So your husband is called to this. You might not feel, quote, called. But you are going to be able to change and evolve and help and walk alongside him. Because it's not often we do things together in ministry. Mm -hmm. But that was a place where God had to shift my heart mm -hmm. 
to walk with right, him. Right, and we're so glad you asked us this question because we all feel, honestly, we all love church and we if it's a burden, that makes me sad that you felt that way. Mm -hmm. And as pastors and missionaries and women that love God and attorneys and just like me, Kathy, we just wanna tell you that it's, it's a joy to love Jesus. So wherever you are in your church and whoever wrote us this question, we don't want it to be a burden for you. We want it to be a joy and we're so glad Glad that we were able to come into your home with our hearts today. We'll see you next time because we are sister to sister here on Real Life. Boy, if there's ever a question that kind of stirs my blood, it's that one, you know, about church and burden to me mm -hmm. should not be in the same sentence it's but, an oxymoron. but it, it really does is. happen to some people but just one angle I kind of wanted to to share about is that you know there are 168 hours in a week your church service is maybe an hour an hour and a half so if you're burned out like think about that mm -hmm. of an hour and a half of a 168 hour week there's probably a problem and it's not the church. It might be with you. It might be right. with, are you getting filled up? Are you in your word? Are you worshiping yourself? If it's becoming a burden, my relationship with my husband is not a burden. It's a joy. So your relationship with the Lord should be a great joy and not such a draining burden. What do you say? Well, I, I say that, that uh, and with all due respect to, to the viewer that would have put, sent that question in, uh, I think that you, you need to look, if, if you feel a burden, I think you have your focus on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Church and worship is not about you. Right. You know, at different times I'll hear, I'll hear people say Here's that, boy, thing. I didn't get a whole lot from the, from the worship this morning. And I think to myself, well, wow. shame on you right. <laughs> because right. it's not about you. It, it's about coming there and laying your all, laying your agenda, laying all of the baggage of that week, laying it at God's feet and just, just going into his presence and glorifying him. Yeah. So I think that we just need to, to, to look inwardly mm -hmm. if in fact you feel that burden. I think maybe you're just looking at the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I guess I'm just wondering what the, the question that came in, if they're looking at the burden, if you're serving, because I can kind, I understand that a lot because burnout is real when you're working in ministry and you're oh, dealing with different mm -hmm. things. And I remember recently um, we have chapel services here at Cornerstone and we had Steve McVeigh. Um, he does a program, Grace Life, which you can see on Fridays and Saturdays. But he said this message that really was life changing for me about obligation. If you feel mm -hmm. obligated to mm -hmm. do something right. that's workspace mm -hmm. and if you're in a season like that like you shouldn't feel like oh I have to be obligated to go do this and obligated to do that because I was in a season of that and I wasn't happy and I was just like I'm losing the joy mm -hmm. of serving and so mm -hmm. God just really like changed my paradigm one of your favorite words yep. and yep. you know and I just realized I was like you have to love what you do and go in there with a grateful heart but I also think too that we're called to be kingdom and so it's not it's more than just being inside of the church and so we got to get beyond you know the church walls mm -hmm. like we are the kingdom of God we are called to be a movement but I think it's like when we get so focused sometimes on running like all respect because I you know love the church and services and stuff but I feel like if we get so consumed like I love my pastor says Sunday should not be the best day of your week it should you know start a fire in you but every other day of your week you know you should be feel the fire and the passion and the mm. love of Jesus to do what you're called to do so hopefully it's not a burden but it's a joy <laughs> I say Sunday fun day <laughs> well Jesus when he was a young boy it said he went to the house of God, which was his custom. It's what they did routinely every week. What about zeal for your house consumes me? I mean, when you get into the word, you're gonna love the house and you're gonna get filled up. Coming up, I get to sit down with Mark Rutland and we're gonna dig in and talk about being healed and what it's going to take and the courage you're gonna need. It's gonna be great. Get a pen and a paper and we'll see you in just a moment. Do you feel lonely, forgotten? Afraid? You are never alone. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Who is our God? Father to the fatherless, defender of widows. This is God whose dwelling is holy. God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. Know that your life has a purpose. You have meaning and you aren't around by accident. I have called you back from the ends of the earth so you can serve me, for I have chosen you and will not throw you away. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. 
Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. If you ever feel alone, call our prayer lines. We are always here for you. Know that Jesus is with you wherever you are, and you are loved. Friendship is what we're all about here at Cornerstone, and we want to find out who you are. Our new Friends Club is a place to get to know us better so we can learn about who's watching us. If you've never reached out to us before, we have a book gift to welcome you to Cornerstone. You'll also receive our monthly newsletter. Just call us and tell the prayer partner you'd like to join the new Friends Club. They'll also pray and intercede for you and your family. Call us at 888-665-4483. Connect with us today. so happy that you're tuned in to real life and you know if this is your first time watching or you've been watching us for a while we'd really love for you to join our new friends club because we want to bless you with this gift this month it's called breakthrough prayer and it's from Guillermo Maldonado and you know prayer is powerful so we want to equip this in your hands so you can see breakthrough in your life like never before because we have a God of the breakthrough and he wants to transform your life in a special way in this season right now let's head over to Amy well, our wounds keep us from fulfilling full potential, but often it is the wounds that we can't see that need the greatest healing. And in his new book, Courage to be Healed, Dr. Mark Rutland explains how to find your hope to restore your soul. Dr. Mark, welcome to Real Life. Thank you, it's great to be back. Thank it is you. just an honor to have you here. You're really becoming like part of our Cornerstone family. Good, that's so what I wanna hear. Continue <laughs> writing the books, so we'll, exactly. we'll be blessed. Okay, so this book I, I really could not put down. I was engaged and engulfed in the stories. It actually kept me from getting a lot of work I needed to get done. It was so good. Let's start with the very picture that you have on the very front of the book, because it good. really lays a foundation for what you're talking about. Yeah, that actually is the foundation for the whole book, and I, and I love the artwork, don't you? I do too, yes. Um, the, uh, the story is the man lowered through the rooftop. Yes. Whenever you hear, you'll hear a thousand sermons on it. They're all gonna be on two different things, mm -hmm. which are both valid. One is the healing power of Christ. Mm -hmm. The story means nothing without that. The other is the faith of the men that carried him up on the rooftop, the, the wounded man. He's mm -hmm. crippled and they carry him up on the rooftop and then lower him through the tiling. Mm -hmm. But it occurred to me as I read the story, I mean, I've been in the ministry 50 years and suddenly I saw something I'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. And it was this, what about the man on the bed? That was a high risk operation for him. Yes. You know, he, he can't move, he can't defend himself. He's gonna let four people drag him up on the roof of a building then lower him through. What if they drop him? Mm -hmm. I mean, it never occurred to me somehow. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, the clientele in that room is more carefully described than any other place Jesus ever preached. It says Pharisees and doctors of the law from wow. the whole country are packed in there. Mm -hmm. And remember the prevailing Pharisaical theology at the time was if you were wounded or impoverished or crippled, it was because God was doing it. So therefore, they're judging him. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we've read the book of Luke, mm -hmm. but he hadn't. Right. <laughs> so he doesn't know what Jesus will do. I mean, maybe he has faith for it, but what if Jesus says, look, I'm in the middle of my sermon. Mm -hmm. Get that thing out of here. So it's just another rejection, another shattered hope. Mm. So at some point, those men tied the ropes around the four corners of his blanket, and they looked at him and said, okay, are you ready? At that point, their faith was not the variable. It was his courage. Wow. It takes, I believe in physical healing. I've yeah. prayed for people, seen signs, wonders, miracles. But to deal with inner woundedness mm -hmm. requires another variable beyond faith. And that variable is courage. Wow. It takes courage to allow the Holy Spirit to hold that mirror up to you mm -hmm. and say, there's what we need to deal with. So how would you define courage? You know, somebody today is facing something or they're acting out in a way and they don't know what is causing this and they maybe feel stuck, like they don't even know what to do. What, what is that step or act of faith or act of courage? Good, the, that's a wonderful question. The first thing is to, uh, to look at yourself. Mm -hmm. Look, if you're at odds with everybody in your extended family, yes. you have to ask yourself, 
what is, amidst all the variables, what's the only constant? Yes. And, and so good. what we want to do is blame somebody else. We always want to blame somebody. My father-in-law, my mother, uh, the Democrats, the Republicans, mm -hmm. somebody. We always want to blame somebody. But at some point, to look inside and say, the, the real issue here is stuff in me. That's, that's mm -hmm. the number one thing. Wow. That's hard to do. Oh, <laughs> if it was easy to do, everybody would do it. Right. The second thing is to say, there may be things in me mm -hmm. that salvation, this is hard to hear, that salvation or even the fullness of the Holy Spirit don't resolve. Um, yeah. This is not to wow. say yeah. salvation isn't, mm -hmm. salvation is the whole thing. Yeah. But if salvation did everything, then why are there church-going, Bible-believing, spirit-filled Christians who are just broken and mean and bitter? Wow. So to say, okay, yes, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven when I die, but I'm not in heaven yet. Right. How about we deal with now? Mm -hmm. That's the second thing. Okay. The third thing is to get help. And get help through maybe counseling, through yes. other options? Yes, counseling, for example. All right, if, if you wanted uh, physical healing, you go forward at your church, according to the book of James. Mm -hmm. Someone will anoint you with oil, the elders, and lay mm -hmm. hands on you. Those are physical people mm -hmm. who lay physical hands on you, but the healing power is from Christ. Yeah. What if you need emotional healing? Mm -hmm. Jesus is also called the wonderful counselor. I know. So maybe he has physical people who help you work through those inner things, the soul, mm -hmm. the psyche, the, the inner self, mm -hmm. your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings. Sometimes we have been unwilling to allow Christ to, to access those and as he uses physical people to anoint us with all and lay hands on us for miracles, he also uses trained people gifted in the Holy Spirit to, to help us process those inner wounds. Mm -hmm. It's the coolest revelation that you had in your book that when he's lowered, a paralytic man lowered from a roof and he meets the wonderful counselor. Yes. All of a sudden I had an aha moment. He is our wonderful counselor. People walking through grief, people walking through depression, walking through anxiety, walking through past hurts and trauma. The Holy Spirit is our wonderful counselor and he will lead us and guide us into all truth. But yeah. what did he say to the paralytic man? Yeah, that's that was one, huge. Well, it is huge and so many people miss it. Yes. Everybody in the room, mm -hmm. even those who wanted Jesus to fail, Yes and the four men on the rooftop and yeah. probably the man on the, on the bed himself. Mm -hmm. But everybody is thinking of his physical healing, yes. right? right? But Jesus doesn't deal with that first. Mm -mm. He says, be of good comfort, son. Your sins are forgiven. So Jesus is dealing with the inner yeah. self. He, that man is somehow struggling with condemnation. Yes. So Jesus knows that he cannot receive or sustain a physical healing mm -hmm. until he receives an inner healing, wow. and so Jesus deals with that first. He relieves him, heals him as the wonderful counselor yes. of condemnation. Wow. Well, and you talk about these, these toxins in your book, toxic emotions, tortured emotions, about shame, unforgiveness, rejection, condemnation, and fear. I believe that I certainly there are a vast multiplicity of yes. variations. Yes. But after 50 years of ministry and counseling and leadership, I'm convinced that all the minor tributaries of mm -hmm. toxic living mm -hmm. actually fall into those five categories. Mm -hmm. That basically everything that can go wrong, you, you, you know people, everybody does, everybody watching right now, you know somebody that they're just toxic. Yes. They, they cause trouble in their churches, they mm -hmm. cause trouble in their families, they cause trouble at where they work. They're just toxic people. And I, I'm not saying they're not going to heaven when they die. Right. But maybe the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying yeah. they need healing yes. while they're here. Yes. And I just don't think that the Holy Spirit wants us to be mean, toxic people. And yes. those toxins flow out of that. Every one of those toxic rivers mm -hmm. flows out of what I call a throne. Yeah. Um, you could call it a stronghold or a mm -hmm. dominion or a mm -hmm. force. But each of those rivers of toxic poison yes. flow out of something. Take, for example, shame, the one you mentioned yes. first. Oh, shame so is a horrible toxin. Mm -hmm. 
It's not embarrassment. It's the inner wound of shame, mm -hmm. where you feel ashamed of yourself, wow. okay? That flows out of the throne of deception. Right. There has to be a lie or a set of lies mm -hmm. that holds that toxic river in place. Yeah. When you can deal with that throne, when you can tear that down, mm -hmm. the Bible tells us the specific therapy mm -hmm. that tears that down. We know, do you know what's carved in the wall of the lobby of the Central Intelligence Agency? No. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I'm, I'm not saying anybody yeah. in that building believes that. Yeah. I'm just saying that that's, <laughs> that's in the lobby. But that's the therapy that tears down the lie yeah. that sets us free of the shame. Right. Wow. And, and you, you say this in your book and, and take several different angles. As the twig is bent, so grows the tree. And we have sometimes these childhood experiences, these childhood traumas, and you stuff it down. And, and, and walking through your book and reading it, you walk us through counseling sessions of trauma situations and then navigating through it and coming out on the victory side. Like you can't just ignore it That's and right. stuff it down. It's going to flare up in shame or anger or something's going to happen eventually in your marriage, your company, it, as the twig is bent, so grows the tree. Precisely. And, and you can keep trying to, and the story is in there of a, a man who yes. as a boy, as a young boy was raped. Yeah. Okay, the, the lie that holds his shame in place is, this is what he believed. He's looking, a 14 year old boy's a little boy. Yes. Okay. But so he believes cool. only a woman can be raped. Wow. So if he faces what happened to him, mm -hmm. it threatens his whole understanding of himself. Yeah. So he suppresses it. Yeah. He represses it. Mm -hmm. And the power of denial mm -hmm. is huge. You can almost make a memory go away. The problem is the beast is under the floorboards. Yes. So he piles his life up with huge success in athletics, yes. leadership, mm -hmm. business, but he becomes toxic masculinity par excellence. Yes. Until his marriage is breaking, his business is breaking, that's when he comes for counseling. Mm -hmm. And in that counseling, as it gets closer and closer to that issue, he becomes more and more angry mm -hmm. until finally it erupts. 40 years, that's been underneath. Yes. Finally it erupts, okay, this is what happened. But he can't use the word rape. Mm. He keeps saying, since that happened, mm -hmm. or since those people did that, or something, why? Mm. Because if he uses that word, it threatens his self-explanation. Mm. But once he uses the word, he says, why do I have to say it? I say, look, because it's the truth and the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. So when he says it, now the shame, there is shame in that, right? Mm -hmm. But now the shame can be put on the violators and not on the victim. Yeah. That is so huge. People are walking around. And, and Mark, I'm just, I feel like the Holy Spirit is really ministering to some people that are watching right now that Praise are God. dealing with that exact thing, shame and condemnation and fear, and they're just tormented deep inside with their emotions. What would you say to them right now? Because there is hope. There is a wonderful counselor who loves them so much. There is hope, and, and, and it's a wonderful hope. We don't have to live with those things. Right. And it's not all just trauma. Mm -hmm. It can be uh, the things that are inside of us percolating around that mm -hmm. keep us in bondage, that make us toxic people. If we will allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to us, hey, yes. look, this is what's wrong mm -hmm. in you. If we will then allow the Holy Spirit to access that with His healing grace, find people to process it with. There's no, I don't know where it got to be shameful in the body of Christ to seek help, right. to seek some counseling mm -hmm. and to talk with somebody that can help you process it, get it through and, and allow the Holy Spirit. God doesn't want us wounded, beat up, neurotic, yes. angry Christians. Amen. He wants us whole and well. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your wisdom and insight in this new book, Courage to Be Healed. You are going to want this book. It will really, truly help you in life. 
We are going to hear more from Dr. Mark in just a moment, and we're praying for you, and we would love for you to call in, and we'll pray for you with the shame, the fear, the unforgiveness, the hurt, the trauma from a child, or maybe it's just something that's brewing in your own world and heart and mind. We want to see you walk in total freedom, and we want you to experience the wonderful counselor and the Prince of Peace. Let's hear from Tom. One of my favorite New Testament stories is the story of the prodigal father. <laughs> no, I didn't say the prodigal son, the prodigal father. You know the story. The boy thought he had answers to all of life's questions and he just wanted to blow the dust of that little town and that home off of his feet. Well, he goes away, he takes his portion of his father's inheritance and he squanders that money and in a very short period of time, his situation grows from bad to worse to worst. Now, the Bible uses an interesting expression. It says that at his low point, where literally he's now a slave and he's gleaning food from the pigs that he's feeding. Do you know what that slop would have been like? But the Bible uses the expression that he came to himself, that he saw himself not how he actually was as a filthy, wretched sinner, gleaning food from pigs, but he saw himself by how the grace of his earthly father he might be. I believe that God is calling you and me right now in this very moment to look at ourselves the way that he looks at us, that we can come to ourselves, not see ourselves as in the midst of trial, in the midst of a fire, challenged, insecure, feel as though we're broken and beaten and believing the lie of the devil that God's grace doesn't extend to us. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in you. And just as that young man came to himself and embarked back on a journey home to where maybe by the grace of his earthly father, he could be restored to a better position than he was, never imagining that he would become a son once again. Oh, and I love that part of the story. As the boy is a great distance off, it's not the boy running to the father for the forgiveness, but it's, it's the father running after the boy and embracing him. And he says, get sandals for his feet. He's no longer a slave. He takes off his robe and puts that robe on the boy and says, you're my son now once again. He takes his signet ring, which was like the credit card, the seal of the family. Praise be to God. Maybe you are believing the lie of the devil right now as you've watched this program, as you're watching that interview. Please don't. I want you to join me in a quick prayer. Father God, we just praise you and we thank you, Lord, that we have hope and that we have a future because of you. Help us, Lord, that we may come to ourselves and that we can see how by your grace we might actually be. Thank you, dear God. We ask your forgiveness, pray for your blessing, and pray for your Holy Spirit to dwell within us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to call our prayer partners. The number is on the screen, 888-665-4483. And you tell them, that man challenged me to come to myself. I am. Where do I go from here? Praise be to God. Please stay tuned now for more Good News with Sydney. American pastors are making headlines for the support of the pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong. Reverends Bill Devlin and Patrick Mahoney traveled to the territory that's part of China. They fierce tear gas and water cannons during a five-day stretch of protests. The reverends say their objective was to share the love of Jesus, pray with demonstrators, and encourage the call for democracy, liberty, and human rights. The men say they noticed the majority of tear gas containers sold to Hong Kong come from a company in Homer, Pennsylvania. Since that discovery, Devlin and Mahoney are working with Congress to pass a bill which would ban American companies from selling tear gas and other things like it to Hong Kong. Well, that's all for the good news. Have a great day on Purpose.
Wow, we love good news here. Mm, we always and do. It's been such a rich program today with the conversations and the courage to be healed hope. and your hope, hope and, <laughs> and your call to salvation. Mm. And so I just believe that God is working and moving in your life right now. I believe he's speaking to you. I believe that something today is going to happen and the light is going to come on Praise and will God. never Praise be the same. Dr. Mark, what would you say if somebody is thinking today, does God love me? Yes, and, and actually there are two different issues. Mm -hmm. um, does God love me? And how do I convince God I love him? Wow. And yeah. that's, a, that's a fascinating thing that can actually cause a lot of drivenness. Mm -hmm. So does God love me? That's clear in scripture. God, God loves me, God is love. God loves me irrespective of the variables in my life. God doesn't love me because of who I am. God loves me because of who he is. Mm -hmm. That's a theological issue, right? And, and that is the healing falls there. I spent four days in in-depth, complicated, and I have his permission to use the story, mm -hmm. with a pastor of a mega church. And he's depressed, lonely, ready to resign, filled with fear. And what we got down to is his father was an alcoholic, a terrible alcoholic, but not violent in the sense of beating him up. But he would come home drunk two, three o'clock in the morning, wake the family up, mm -hmm. gather them around the dining room table, and then say, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to kill myself. Mm -hmm. You don't love me. None of you care about me. Yeah. So here's this pathetic picture of these little children screaming mm -hmm. to their dad, we do love you. We do love you. We care for you, daddy. Please don't. So here's a mega church pastor who's working, striving, building a big church to convince God, I love you. <laughs> He's not trying to convince himself. He said, I know God loves me. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not sure God believes I love him. And I wow. said, pastor, can't you see yes. the connection? Yes. We had a phenomenal breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I just was back at his church recently and he mm -hmm. said it's the most joyful, well, peaceful time in my whole life. Wow. Because there's nothing we can do to work or earn God's love. It's just that he loves us. Well, we have one of our faith and family churches is up in uh, Beaver County. And the pastor there was a drug runner and was actually in prison because he ran drugs from Chicago to, to Beaver County. And he goes out and he gets people that aren't necessarily your church kind of people. They literally make a run early on Sunday morning and pick up the alcoholics and pick up the drug addicts, pick up the prostitutes. And on the side of their van, and I've seen this, it says, God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, mm, I love that. Isn't that great? Boy, that kind of says it all. Isn't and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. That's so good. The, um, the human aspect of woundedness mm -hmm. is often deals with other things. Disappointment, dis mm -hmm. there is trauma. We talked about sure. that in the last segment. Mm -hmm. But there are other issues, just disappointment, disillusionment, mm -hmm. woundedness, unforgiveness yes. uh, oh. is, a, is a huge toxic right. thing. There are many, many people that walk around bitter, angry, and unforgiving toward other people, thanking God every day for their own forgiveness. God, I thank you that you forgive me, right. but I'm not forgiving my father. Wow. And, they, and they live with huge unforgiveness in their lives. Well, the, the, there's one parable that speaks specifically to that, that the, the king or the Lord forgives sure. this, this man of this extraordinary debt. As a matter of fact, many theologians wonder how you could have incurred that much debt. And it probably was that he was, took care of the money for, for his Lord. And then he goes out and tries to petition, you know, for pennies on the dollar, people that owed him money. And it's exactly that principle. Where unforgiveness rests, we talked about this, mm -hmm. each toxic river mm -hmm. flows out. You remember in Ezekiel, the river of life, life. flows out of, the, out of the altar of life. Yes. That's right. Toxic rivers yes. flow out of some kind of source also. I call mm -hmm. them in the book thrones. Mm -hmm. You right. can say a dominion or power or principality, mm -hmm. but each river flows out of a throne. Mm -hmm. The throne of unforgiveness may surprise you. It's legalism. That was an aha moment in the book. Legalism is not what people think. Mm -hmm. People think of legalism as, you know, how long can a guy's hair be? How mm -hmm. short can a girl's skirt be? How you dress? Mm -hmm. Legalism is a reductionist philosophical view of life 
that sees all of life as a set of if-then propositions. If you do this, then this. Mm -hmm. So you can be legalistic about health food. If you don't eat anything but Brussels sprouts and free-range tofu, <laughs> then you won't get cancer, okay? <laughs> so, Sounds good. Yeah, so then if you, if you live with that as a law, mm -hmm. the law can't ever be wrong. The law can't be 90%. So if you get cancer, then what we say to you is, we know you cheated. Mm. Somewhere along the line, mm. you, slipped into a, right. you slipped into a Hardee's somewhere. <laughs> so we, we yeah. actually imprison people with the law, yeah. you see? So you can be legalistic about anything. Um, and we take promises of God and impose them on other people and on ourselves as laws. I'll give you an example that's in the book. Okay. Um, brace up a child in yeah. the way that he should go, mm. and when he is grown, he will not right. depart. Okay, mm -hmm. so somebody has a wayward child, mm -hmm. and legalists say, that proves you didn't raise him right. right. You see? Wow. But here's the problem with that. God raised Adam mm -hmm. in the Garden of Eden. God raised Adam in the Garden of Eden, and he still sinned. Was that a good point? He still sinned. So you may be a great dad. What you're not is God Almighty. Mm -hmm. You may have a wonderful household. It isn't the Garden of Eden. Right. Mm -hmm. So if God raised Adam and he still sinned, if you work backward from the law, God is responsible for Adam's sin, and that's blasphemy. Wow. So if God can raise Adam and he still sinned, then what about us with our kids? So here's what it really means. Mm -hmm. This is what the promise really means. Right. Raise up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's grown, he will not depart unless he does. <laughs> in which case, yes. well put. Everybody, everybody has a right to their own sins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your children do too. Mm -hmm. God raised Adam and he still sinned. Who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. But if you live under that legalism, mm -hmm. then what happens is you hold people in bondage that to that so law well and unforgiveness takes root in your heart. And it's a, it's, a, it's a root of bitterness. That one will destroy you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mark, what you're saying just really reminds me. I feel like it's just such a tactic of the enemy. It's like old tricks just like over and over again repeating itself because the same thing. It's just like, oh, well, you know, if you don't do it this way or you don't mm. do it that way. And we're still dealing with that bondage that holds us in captivity. And it's like, it's really, it's like a mindset you have to change. You have to have a paradigm shift in order that's to right. think right and be like, okay, I have to see this is what the word really says. And that's a lie. It is a lie, and you're, you're exactly right. The enemy doesn't have a vast variation of tactics. Mm -mm. He only has the toolbox that are, the tools that are in his That's box. Right. Basic. Right. And he just keeps using them over and over again. Why? Because they work. Mm. When, when we are able to see that tool is operating in my life, I'm willing for God to tear the throne down. Truth tears down the throne of a deception mm -hmm. which destroys the toxin of shame. Right. Whatever it is, when we allow that, then God begins to produce a new thing in us. Mm. And, that, and that then is, is the healing that he brings. I, I, I spent some time in counseling with a lady. Uh, her, she was an elderly lady who was suffering from agoraphobia. You, you understand what it means that, mm. uh, from the Latin word agora, market. So mm. she's afraid of being outside. outside. She's afraid of being outside. in the public, yeah. afraid of being with crowds. She's now confined in her house. Her grown children have to bring her groceries. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. her middle-aged son, a wealthy businessman, brings me in to counsel with her. So I have to go to her house to do the counseling, you see? Mm -hmm. So I began by trying to convince her that nothing bad would happen to her in her daughter's car or at the shopping mall or whatever. I didn't make a dent. Mm -hmm. So I reversed field and I started telling her all the bad things that could happen to her in her house. Mm -hmm. I said, ma'am, anybody could break in here. Mm -hmm. They could kill you. She said, Dr. Rutland, are, are you trying to help me? This doesn't feel like help. Mm -hmm. And I convinced her the problem was she wanted to create a pain-free moment. Wow. And that's not a valid biblical goal. Right. Wow. God never promised us a pain-free life. That's right. What he promised is to be in the pain with us. So we began to talk about Jesus being in her house. Mm. Gradually, we expanded that outward. And I'll never forget when her husband, her uh, son, called me on his cell phone. He said, he was crying. He said, I'm sitting in my mother's driveway and I'm watching my mother water the flowers in the front yard. Wow. Because we, she was able to see all fear 
flows out of the throne of pain. Wow. Either real pain from the past or imagined pain, we try to insulate ourselves against this and all it does is make us afraid. Wow. You will know the truth and the truth, truth will, will set, set you, free. you free. Dr. Mark, thank you so much. He will be joining us uh, a little bit later for our time of prayer. Please call in with all of your prayer requests. Our prayer partners are waiting to hear from you and we love to pray for you. And we're believing God with you for that breakthrough and that miracle that you That's need right. in your life to be whole and healthy and happy. We'll be right back with more on Real Life. Your Cornerstone TV family is excited to offer you a new way to give. It's quick, simple, and secure. You can now text to give. All you'll need is your cell phone to donate. No cash or writing checks. You can try it right now to experience this new giving option. Simply use your cell phone and text the letters CTVN to the number 28950. Once you send the text, you'll receive a reply message with easy instructions. Just follow the prompts. You only have to register once and it just takes a minute. Remember, text CTVN to the phone number 28950 to make your gift today. And don't forget to save the phone number 28950 to your contact list. Every CTVN donation helps us spread the gospel with power. So thank you in advance for your partnership. Very, very dear friend to this ministry, one of our faith and family pastors, former NFL lineman and all around good guy, Ron Kozor. Welcome to have you here on Real Life. Thanks, brother. Appreciate praise, it. Praise God. Ron, you're a big, tough guy and your approach to life has always been living big, living large. But you had some challenges the last couple of years physically, but God has been the answer to that and been the healing for you. Absolutely. You know, I, I just, when we're thinking about healings and, and what brings us through that, this hope we're talking mm -hmm. about today, you know, I was thinking that the, the verse that you use at the beginning where it says that he'll give you a future Praise and hope. Jeremiah. Yeah. That's right. The, the future is what's been able to bring me through my difficulties. I mean, you know, about five years ago when I had the problem with my eye, right. the first problem I had was I just was losing vision. So I had to get these shots in my eye. So I get a shot in my eye the first of every single, the first Monday of every month for 18 months. Mm. So that was a year and a half of my life where me and my wife was struggling and going through this. I, I just wanna add parenthetically that you got this, uh, this shot with yep. a syringe yes. and you were awake. Wide awake. <laughs> mm -hmm. They looked like what they put a C-clamp on my eye and held my eye open and gave me a shot. Oh my God. So, but hey, I, I had a, a supernatural healing. I mean, God supernaturally healed me. Mm -hmm. And then I went about three years with no issues whatsoever. And then, you know, th this past year and back in a little bit before June that I had a totally detached retina. Mm -hmm. And what that means is I basically went blind in my right eye where my retina detached and fell down on the inside of my eye, blocking my, my vision. So um, all, all through this process, God has been so faithful, Tom. I mean, and everybody out there that watches the show, um, like I heard you say a little bit earlier, it, 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 um, sometime in our life, we all go through difficulties. We do. You know, it's just a matter of how we individually deal with them. And for me, what has helped me is that hope, you know, and I have a hope in the future. So my future, what, I'll just give you an example on what I do. Like, I believe that we're a chosen generation. I believe we're living in a time unlike any other. Everything's shaking right now and everybody don't know what's up and what's down. That's and, right. But That's right. for me, so I know the Bible tells us that since in Israel became a nation, this generation shall not pass. An example. So before that, we couldn't have been the last generation. Before Jerusalem was the, the capital of Israel, there are things that have to take place that are happening now. And that's what I let be my motivation. It's, it's the hope that I have in the future, and most importantly, of he who c controls the future. That's right. Right, of who I keep my the eyes on, as future. you know, yeah. Praise God. And, and Ron, I think it's, it's important. I, different times we'll have people that will come up to me and, and they'll say, would you please 
pray for me. I, mm -hmm. I've been a believer for 20 years, but I just, from time to time, I just have a terrible insecurity. Mm -hmm. I want you to, to, to literally speak to a viewer that, that may be insecure about their relationship with God, mm -hmm. about how it doesn't depend upon them Right. because God has already fought the fight and won the victory. Mm -hmm. And whether we acknowledge it or not, right. He is God mm -hmm. and He is true to His promises. Right. Everything is based on, on the Word of God and it says that God will cause all things to work together for the good. That's right. For them who love Him and who are the called according to His purpose. And one thing I've learned in life is I try not to let my circumstances control me, but I like to control my circumstances. <laughs> So no matter what you're going through, no matter how bad things look, if you could just really keep your eyes and your focus on the Lord, and we do that through knowing His Word, but that's what really pulls us through. I mean, that's the, that's the future, that's the hope that we have. So no matter what you're going through, I just really encourage you not to lose sight. Set that carrot out there, whatever it may be, that thing that motivates you to run the race with endurance, having fixed our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter, the finisher of our faith. See, without him, no matter how tough we are, no matter how, how things get shaken in our life, we'd be in trouble. So we can't do anything without him, but with him we can do all things. That's exactly right. And that, right. that's my encouragement, is, is the faith and trust and hope for me and my wife both, because it Praise just doesn't God. take you. It takes your wife, your family, your job, your business, when you go, through them difficult situations, it, it just, it consumes your life. So sometimes it's not just the person with the illness, it's their family members, it's their friends, it's their job, it's their finances. I mean, it, uh, uh, an illness can consume your whole life. So that's the word of encouragement I'd like to leave with you today, that hope in the future. Let the future encourage and build your hope. That, mm -hmm. That's what I've done in the past. And no matter what you go through, Never forget that God causes all things to work together for the good for them that love Him and who are called according to His purpose. Would you please pray for that viewer that Absolutely. is watching today, maybe for the first time, Absolutely. And, and, and an understanding for the first time mm -hmm. that they can have hope in their relationship Absolutely. with God. Well, Father, right mm -hmm. now we come to you in the blessed name of your Son, Jesus. And according to your word, Lord, you said that wheresoever two or more would gather in your name that you would be there in their midst. So Lord, we pray for every single, every single viewer right now. We commit them unto you, spirit, soul, and body. We ask for supernatural divine healing to take place in these, in these people's lives. I have a good friend, Don Reed. I want to pray for him right now. He's going through some tremendous mm -hmm. physical difficulties. And I just want to include him in this prayer and just pray for, for your hand to yes, touch Lord. and heal yes, him. Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ron, thank you. You are just anointed of God mm -hmm. in your ministry. You're anointed of God on the Crossing Paths program. Mm -hmm. We're just so glad to call you a friend of Likewise, this ministry. Bro. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony of hope in the midst of those thank you. circumstances. I appreciate Praise it. Praise be to God. Well, we'll be praying for your prayer requests in just a moment, but now let's see what's on tomorrow's real life. Tomorrow on Real Life, finding hope after the loss of a child. Becky Nordquist brings encouragement to the grieving heart. Also, if I'm living in sin and the rapture comes, will I be left behind? The Hard Questions pastors share their thoughts about the second coming. Plus, Cornerstone Cares. Tom Hollis highlights a ministry partner making a kingdom impact. That's tomorrow on Real Life. It has been an absolute delight to be with you in this hour and we truly believe with all of our heart in God's presence and, and learning about his purpose and encouraging one another. And now perhaps the most important time of all where we can stand with you. You've called in and, and, and your prayer requests are, are humbling as we look at, at just the transparency that you would call and, and, and ask us to stand with you in prayer. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. We have Deborah here and, and praying for her family and for herself and praying for a, for a security that she can know. Here's a Sharon with a, a physical 
uh, healing that she would, uh, is praying for for her brother. This is his 12th surgery that he's going through and, and, and we're believing that this is going to be successful. Mm -hmm. We're praying for Robin and praying with her for her finances. Uh, she has a family member that's on parole and just praying that he can get his life right with God. Here are, here's Pat praying for a physical healing, praying for her son who has a, a high sugar count, his healing. Thank you, God. Thank yeah. you, God. Thank you, God. Yeah, I just feel like such a, like there's a spirit of heaviness. Probably like a lot of you have Harold calling for deliverance from anxiety and he wants a good night's sleep. And Harold, you know, God yeah. says that he loves to give his beloved rest. And I just speak to you right now that any bondage that is over his mind is broken in the name of Jesus. We also have Kimberly asking for the same thing, um, deliverance from depression. Mm. You know, I just feel like there's such a heaviness in there. I just, like I see right now, Kimberly, there's like a cloud that is even over you yes. and that, you know what, God is pushing that cloud as you just, I just encourage you. If if you feel depression, if you feel heaviness, put your hands in the air and just begin to worship God, God and yes. bring in the presence yes. because God is with you. God's love will deliver you from those things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dr. Mark, would you pray for our viewers and family and friends that just, they need a breakthrough and they need Absolutely. healing and they need hope and they need to know that God loves them Amen. and he's good and he's faithful. They need Absolutely. courage. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I do. I pray not only for Sandy, who wants healing from depression. Yes. I pray for the healing of her depression and from the healing of the anger from which this depression probably flows. Mm. Lord, I pray for all of these who have called yes. in and yes. all who will yes. ever see this show yes. and all those who care about the healing of Christ in their own lives. Amen. I pray, God, that you will minister to them in the power of the Holy Hallelujah. Spirit. Send great grace upon them. Amen. Send people into their lives that can show them and teach them and guide them into new places, new altitudes mm. of healing and wholeness. Yes. I pray, God, that every bondage, every throne of darkness will be cast yeah. down and every toxic river dried up at the source that they may come to a life of wholeness, not only just physically, but physically as well. Yes. Those that are sick, those that are wounded are afflicted, those that are afflicted emotionally and spiritually. I pray for those loved ones that are away from you, God. I pray that you will reveal to the concerned that you care for their loved ones more than they do. Mm. Yes. You know that way we're child yes. and that you are drawing that child back, yes. that husband who needs help. Yes. We claim these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen Thank and amen. Lord, amen. Thank you, Mark. It just, wow. uh, what an anointing in this hour. Thank you so much. Ron, God bless you for your testimony and your strength. Amy, Sydney, thank you. Always a delight and a delight to be with you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.